ever thought of becoming an intimacy coach? I did. And uh, it's almost eight years since I've been doing this work. Here are nuggets from the work that I've been doing, not in sessions, but in promoting my work. Let's talk about this. Hi, this is Liana, Holistic Intimacy Coach. Welcome back to my channel. Here, I help you get your orgasmic intimacy. Though today we're going to talk about brain work. <laughs> Jesus. So I wrote down, like I sat down and made a list. This is the whole thing. And then I got, I saved the best for last. And this is just to make sure that I don't miss any of my nuggets. Uh, in the years that I've been doing this work, most of it, I've done it on my own. And I guess that's why I'm barely 8,000 followers on my YouTube channel. The rest of my channels are smaller. So uh, yeah, probably I'm not the best marketer on the planet. Gee, no wonder. <laughs> but obviously, when you're not good at something, you go and seek advice. Here are the crazy things, and then I save the best for last, that I've heard from quote-unquote marketing specialists. Okay, let's start. The first one, this was actually a critique from uh, my one of the marketers that I looked for uh, to get support, but his wife gave this feedback. What's up with this woman's face? Why doesn't she put on makeup? Why does she look like she looks like? And to that, my reply was simply, you know, when I was training, I didn't wear makeup. Nobody did. When I have sex, I don't really care about makeup. It usually doesn't last long. Um, it tends to come off, so I tend to not wear it. So I don't know what's the problem with me not wearing makeup. Obviously, I think this is on all the countries in the, on the planet. The same thing. Women have this standard. Like successful women need to put on a lot, like a whole lot. And you might be wondering, what's up with my outfit? This is my Alice in Wonderland outfit, by the way. <laughs> I'm right. If I ever were to film a movie or, or something related to Alice in Wonderland, this is what I would dress her as. So it's got a lot of fluffy things and it's a whole, well, I can't show the whole thing. You've seen it in another video. Here's the one. Hi, I'm Liana, Holistic Intimacy Coach. I facilitate audio somatic practices for anyone needing support or working on their inner states. So this one is me making fun of the whole situation because I feel I went down the rabbit hole. And one of the things that I went down the rabbit hole with was what's up with this woman's face? What's up with my face? It's a normal face, really. I haven't had any plastic surgery. I haven't had any Botox. I haven't, like, this is my natural face. And I stopped using, because in the past, somebody commented here, ew, what happened? I used to put on beauty filters. Like, I would torment Julian, the one that I was filming with and editing my videos professionally. Every time we would film, and I would see, like, my eyes looked kind of puffy and all of that, I said, Julian, put on a beauty filter, please. He hated me for it because it took years extra for him to export the fucking videos <laughs> from okay i stopped doing that after a while i got more confident so that was the first critique that i got the second one what's up with this woman's clothes <laughs> and what's up with matching the colors uh, this one was from not his wife the actual guy so when i went to meet this guy and his team i was wearing a romanian traditional shirt that had a red sewn pattern on it and i have these uh fuchsia so really intense pink like bright electric pink pants and in my feet i was wearing something neutral like um uh, pastel pink uh ballet shoes really something comfortable that i can just fly with in the city i'm small so i walk really fast it's like i fly <laughs> so when he saw me he was like what's up with you? you're not even matching your colors what is that so i gave this answer to the man i said look i understand you're a guy and you know that pink and red don't go together i said i have a different opinion and this is how i match them but i'll give you a link to a woman that is actually a personal stylist and you can listen to her i can indicate the minute where she said it about personal style you want to evaluate the person based on the whole 
like their individuality, personality, and how they flow with their clothes. Do their clothes and what they present themselves at, as match their values or the way of being? Do you see them being more like themselves? Do they flow with it? Or is it making them uncomfortable? Is there a dissonance between what the clothes transmit and what the person transmits? That's what you want to look at. So I was very diplomatic about it. He was not in his criticism. Okay, the third one. Uh, this is again from this guy who was married. Get a fiance and show him, and then all the women will come to take coaching from you because they want to know how to get a man like you did. Here's what I said. If I get a partner, when and if, it's because I love him and he loves me back. I'm fine with my own toys and my own practices. I'm way better off that way than in all kinds of tests and experiments with people that I have no connection with. So a lot of people go about this differently. I have my own way. And if I get, or when I get, it's really rare that I get an intimate partner. That's also been the, what is it, the theme of my entire life. Most of the time I've been single because who I felt for and who I dreamed and aspired to be in a relationship with didn't really respond and vice versa. Okay, the people that aspired or wanted to be in a relationship with me, I just I wasn't attracted to them. So there was this lack of reciprocity most of the times. Now, in the few times where I had reciprocity, I stayed there not to show off, not to portray myself look like I'm one with the world now. I too can have a relationship. There's nothing wrong with me. So I stayed in those relationships because of the experience. I didn't really put myself out there and said, look, this is my boyfriend, my fiance, soon to be husband or whatever. No. And I don't get into a relationship just to show off. I understand many people do that and I totally respect their choices. It's their lives, their values, their priorities. For me, that is not how it's going to happen or play out. Sure, if I will encounter somebody who is actually happy to do that, absolutely. But it's not mandatory. And I don't want to be in a relationship just to show it off. From that moment on, whenever somebody suggested to me that I would present my life because people vicariously consume others' lives online, I said, no, thank you. <laughs> not for me. Next one is share more personal drama and trauma and tell people how you overcame it. So basically, uh, lead by your own example. And I want to introduce here a term that you might be familiar with, trauma porn. Yes, people, in order to get ahead and show themselves as the elite top in their business, tend to share the most shocking, in a negative sense, stories and how they overcame that as if this is what makes them a good facilitator for others. Key insight here, it does not. Just because you overcome something, that means you're good at living your own life, and that's great. But it doesn't automatically mean that you can help others because people are different. Holding space for others while they're navigating their struggle is a different process from you navigating your own struggle completely different things. Just because you went through something doesn't mean another individual can do the same and have the same results. And it doesn't mean you're, you're an authority in facilitating for others. Absolutely. And this one was me educating other marketing gurus, telling them, no, sir, you do not understand facilitating and holding space for others is a different thing you need to get educated because if you just want to promote people that had shocking life stories then what you're doing is turning the classical mainstream media and taking their way of shocking and bringing fear and other outrageous stuff to the world and putting it in personal growth and personal growth 99 percent of the time is the opposite of outrage of shock of fear it's diligence, it's persistence, perseverance, it's um, discipline. I have, I still struggle with this word. 
<laughs> so it's you sticking up to doing things that are actually most of the time tedious, but they need to be done in order for you to transform yourself. Think about this, competitions, whether it's for figure skating, uh, wrestling, uh, dance, or anything else. Are, yeah, they're flashy. They look outstanding. But the actual day-to-day -day training that those people go through, totally boring, totally repetitive. They don't wear the flashy clothes. The scenery doesn't look as fancy as that of the competition ballroom or wherever they're holding the sports hall. None of that. This is coaching is behind the success and all of that. Personal growth is there. Most of it, 99% is in the daily grind. The tediousness of it is actually the value of it. So that's why most of my videos, I'm pretty grounded in my entire approach. And I try to present the stuff that we need to do on a daily basis. That's why the community of practices is there, because that's the actual thing that is going to get you to have results over the long run. And this also needs to be said. It's not really ethical to bring traumatic stuff, uh, episodes, tales, accounts in online and social media because most times you're um, basically re-triggering people that have had traumatic experiences and you're opening a wound that you're not there to help them heal. You're doing that so that they can join your program, but maybe some of those people can't afford. Maybe you're not the best person to help them. So you're just re-triggering people or triggering them on deep wounds. And then you're potentially leaving them with those things opened, shocked, and all of that. That's not ethical. That's not what a good practitioner does. And there's got to be ethics in promotion, by the way. So at this point, 90% of the marketing gurus out there are like gone. From my perspective because they don't understand this another thing that i wrote on my list was really freaky tv appearances in my country so when i started this work almost eight years ago in romania southeastern europe people were outraged i was in environmental activism the president of really high profile ngo the founding president like not just an average woman here and yeah, from this perspective in society, from a respectability point of view, people thought I was going like real, like I was killing my entire career. Yeah, a lot of people laughed at me here. A lot of people gossiped about me. You cannot imagine how many. That's why I had to step down from the work that I was doing with environmental protection. And people, even today, some of the people in the past still make jokes with me now about sex, about like really rude jokes which I cut away, like I cut them really fast. I'm like, I dismiss them basically and keep reminding them that I'm a human being that decided to do this work. So our society has still a lot, a lot to grow when it comes to understanding why we're, it's needed to do work on this field and why the people work in this field from a personal growth perspective are not people to be laughed at or discarded because they're low quality. No. Anyway, that's their stories. I dismiss it and that's it. When I kept doing this work, I began being invited on podcasts. Most of them from my country. Most of them really, really respectful. They were really okay and cool and appreciative and curious about what I was doing in sessions, the topics that I was approaching, anything that I could share from this perspective. And I did that. on TV. I got very little invites, basically, and some, not all, some were really degrading. They felt at times degrading to me. I was summoned there and summoned because it was shocking, obviously, and uh, just flabbergasting somehow to them and to their audience. So whenever I was on TV, sometimes I would have images shown there they wouldn't an announce me that they would show them and they would make fun of that at least my last tv appearance was about that and i said you know what no more no more tv show invites where people make fun as opposed to understanding 
that it's a delicate thing and you don't want to embarrass the person there. Uh, anyway, the last TV appearance also had a woman there. I will always, 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 always remember what she said. And she really was really sensitive and delicate, like really the last appearance. She counterbalanced all the embarrassment that I had felt in the beginning. She said, we people tend to make fun of things that we don't understand. And she was very, like she came, she stayed, or she stood actually next to me as i was explaining really really i'm always going to remember that woman and i'm always going to speak about her in the sense that look this is the kind of people that i want to meet more in the media in i don't know television networks among journalists wherever people that truly truly understand the the delicacy of the whole thing and the vulnerability for the coach also to put themselves out there with this kind of work because it's not easy but I said that I saved the best for last. This was not the best. Check this out. Four years ago, before the pandemic, I was seeking support from the man who is, he has a marketing business in Romania. And he was the one that encouraged me to upload my classes on Udemy. And for a while, I was really, really killing it on Udemy until they decided to cancel or retire, basically, the whole aspect of sexuality seduction relationships intimacy all of romance and all of that I, I just went to him and told him that i wanted to develop more my business in my own country like in live in person events coaching sessions invites to other shows or you know to speak at other gigs here's what this guy did and there are not many people like him not many marketers said, all right, I understand, but I need to do something else first. I need to book three sessions with you so that I can understand the process. I need to understand what you do in order to give you my marketing expertise. We went through the process. So he filled in the coaching form. I went through the three sessions. I sent reports after each session. And at the end of them, we met one more time. And he said, look, First of all, I need to congratulate you on something because I, I was never aware how this process would, like, never imagined how it would be. So the professionalism, the attention to details, the, um, the depth of the questions and the topics that we went into, this is not the flimsy stuff that you see on YouTube. And I said, no, this is coaching, really. And then the second thing, he said, I don't have good news for you. I said, oh my God, what am I doing wrong? He said, you're not doing anything wrong. Society is not yet ready for this. Maybe in 15 years, society will be. That was four years ago. Yeah. Uh, I want to explain this, why society isn't ready. Number one, people, in most cases, they reach me when they're in a crisis. You don't do much with coaching when you're in a crisis. You need therapy. Coaching is proactive when you're okay and you want to build, you want to develop. Basically, when you're with a wound or an accident, you don't go to practice or, I don't know, training. You go to recovery and you train towards a goal when you're in good health and good shape, right? Right. So most people come to coaching when, in fact, they need therapy. And it is true. In our country, we don't understand the concept of coaching because constructively working towards a goal is not in our dna yet we seek advice we seek help me we seek i want to be like that person coaching is neither of these or any of these because we're talking about three things any any of these the first thing people need actually therapy and they need education and then they're good for coaching most of people in our country this guy understood it really well he's good at marketing he would understand his market they're not there yet not with their personal lives with their professional lives yes sure with personal lives because we don't have this culture of educating people about relationships and educating people on developing themselves 
No, we educate people so that they can perform well in a job. And that's it. So they would understand coaching when it comes to their profession. Recently, they started understanding the notion of coaching when it comes to also sports or physical activities. But when it comes to actually working on yourself and the relationship in advance proactively, they don't understand coaching. They're, they need to go to therapy. Secondly, people actually don't want to do. They're kind of lazy here. This is the truth. We don't want to work so much. There is this thing in our country where we tend to copy more, imitate, copy and paste from others. And sadly, this is a really big phenomenon. For several years, it was a big phenomenon in our educational system also, which was not a really something to be proud of when it comes to our country. So they tend to copy others. They don't have the concept of what is my unique personality and how do I grow organically what I uniquely am. How do I find my ways of expressing things? This is very rare. Coaching is not about copying others. Nothing, not education, shouldn't be about copying others because you can't copy paste another individual with a different life, different set of, you know, different body, different skills, different intellectual abilities, different kind of intelligence. There, when I learned about intelligence, I knew about seven forms of intelligence. We all have them in different um, percentages but sadly this is what people want they want to be like others they don't want to be like them so my approach when I'm, I'm with coaching that's one and i'm with working proactively to maintain yourself or to develop yourself in in the positive and that's the boring thing for most people sadly the grind and secondly i'm all about being you because the best orgasms in bed, you get them. Not when you're copying somebody else, but when you're being you, when you're being seen as all that you are, when you're wanted and desired, and geez, the other person is turned on immensely by you, who you are. Those are the best orgasms. That is the most satisfying, intimate life you're ever going to have when somebody loves you 1,000%. Somebody's turned on by you 1,000%. The you, the real you, not the fake you. That's why, that's what this guy meant, you know, by saying society, our society is not yet ready. So at that time, he told me that intimacy was not necessarily the best investment. And I said, okay, I understand, but this is what I invested in. This is what I got trained in. And I believe it's a future investment in the future. So I'm going to stick with this. So that's it. Those are my nuggets. I would love to know which ones hit you or struck you the most. Uh, which ones left a, a lesson for you there. Or what are, if you're a coach also, what other nuggets have you had in your path? I would really love to know. See you next time. Bye.